So we know that there's a spare M2 22 by 80 slot in the Mi notebooks. That is both in the Core M version and then the 13 inch version. We'll also have a spare slot in there. Now it's PCIe. So what I decided to do was pick up one of the 950 Pros. Now I know this is a complete overkill. I have one of these in my desktops. It's quite a good drive, but it does get quite hot and throttle. But anyway, I'm gonna try and install this now in my Mi Notebook Air 12.5 inch version. So you need to remove, obviously, the back case. Otherwise, you're not gonna have access to this. There's no little slot there just to slot it in. So the whole thing has to come off. Now I do have a video. There should be a card popping up in the video right now. So there's a little tiny eye there. Click on that. And that will show you the video of, of how to actually remove the whole back case in there. You basically need a T5 Torx screwdriver. Go around, remove the seven screws. There's a rubber foot there, get rid of that, and then pry it all open. But it's a little hard to get off when you first get it off there. Second time round, this came off a lot easier for me. So they've already included the screw there for you, which is good. So you need to remove that. And as a precautionary measure, I'm not gonna do it here, but I should, I know I should, is remove the battery. So the battery is this plug right here. Remove that just in case. You don't wanna short anything out, cause any problems. So my little screw actually has a little rubber washer that came out with the screw. Don't know if you can see that, probably not. The camera's not focused on that, but there it is. Make sure you don't lose that either. So this thing just slots in, very easy to put it in. Now I'm hoping this is gonna work at full times four speeds. Now it should, I did a bit of research with Intel's Arc, and what I found out is, yes, it can run one times four speeds, so four PCIe lanes should be able to operate on this. So I just screwed it in place. Now be careful, there is a speaker cable here that gets in the way, so just push that aside and then I just screwed it in. So I'm now gonna put the lid back on as an extra step, because these drives get smoking hot, these ones here, they really cook themselves. It might be a good idea to actually put a long thermal pad across the whole thing. So that's got thermal pads on the NAD chips there, and that will transfer heat onto the rear alloy shell. So put the thermal pads on there, we'll transfer all that heat onto the back of this, and that should help out in keeping that thing from throttling. And even if you're gonna use like an SM951, that's another Samsung PCIe drive, that will still help out, I think, keeping it a little bit cooler. Okay, so time to power it up, and if it does work, I will benchmark it and show you the results. Okay, so as I suspected, yes, it does work. As you can see now, those are my read speeds. This is Crystal Disk Mark 5.1.2. Now, you'll notice that the read speeds aren't as fast. This isn't as fast as my desktop. My desktop gets over 2,000, so something's up with that, and the 4Ks aren't as good as they should be here, so 400. But the write speeds are actually really good, and they came out a tad faster than my desktop, which... I don't really understand why that's happening, but not bad. And if I show you quickly Samsung Magician here, that it is reporting that the PCIe slot is currently speed as eight gigabits per second, max eight gigabits per second. Now that should be 10, so that could be explaining why my reads are a little slower there. But the link speed, the length width current times four and the max times four, so that is good. It's running at times four, which it should be, not times two or times one. And the bandwidth current is 32 gigabits per second, maximum 32 gigabits per second. So that is running quickly a lot faster than the SATA. Now the SATA speed, the default drive they give you, those are the speeds that you can get from it. So those speeds, they're fine. I mean, they're perfectly fine. It boots up really quick, it boots up snappy. And I'm gonna see now if I can set that drive as a boot drive. I'm pretty sure I can just change the boot order there in the BIOS and that will allow me to boot from it without any problems. Now, I do feel this is a bit of an overkill putting this in a machine as cheap as this, okay? But you can go and get yourself maybe the Samsung SM951. Now, you can pick up the 128 gigabyte version and maybe use that as a boot drive. They sell for around, I think it's about 70 US or 65 US. So they're relatively cheap. Not as expensive as this one here. And really, I think the bottleneck's gonna be the CPU here, of course, and the RAM is, is not as fast as other machines. But if this is working in the Core M 12.5 inch model, then it's going to work definitely in the 13 inch model, which is a lot faster with its Core i5 6-2000U. And finally, does the BIOS detect it? Yes, but there is a catch. You have to go into legacy mode with the boot menu. 
That's the only way it's going to show up. So I don't know, well, hopefully you'll be able to install the operating system then and do a clean install onto the Samsung or onto your PCIe slot there. So that is the video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you back in the channel soon.